Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're introducing coordinate geometry as part of the IB Math Studies SL course, uh, Year 11 of course. Now, um, in terms of today's lesson, today we're just focusing on how to sketch a graph um, and I probably should be putting here a linear graph. Um, and making sure we know the difference between what a linear graph and a nonlinear graph is. Uh, so first of all, if we look at a straight line, for example, uh, a Cartesian plane, we know there's a y-axis and an x-axis. And the question might be something such as this, uh, sketch a graph of y equals x plus 2. Um, remembering this is called a linear graph because x to the power of 1. A quadratic graph will be x to the power of 2. A cubic graph, x to the power of 3, etc. So linear means x to the power of 1, all right, or y equals x. Uh, we also remember this being y equals mx plus b. Um, and in fact, in IB, we call it y equals mx plus c. But these things are exactly the same. So how do you sketch a graph of y equals x plus 2? Um, there are lots of ways. Okay, In fact, I would say there are probably three distinct ways on how to do this. Um, probably the first way, the most uh, probably the most common way you've done this is from what we call a table of values. This is where we would put a table uh, with x and y coordinates. We throw in a couple of values such as negative 1, 0, 1. You might do it to negative 2 to positive 2, etc. And you simply plot the coordinates given the rule y equals x plus 2. So minus 1 plus 2 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. How do we know it's right? Well, if these are in order, then these should be going up by the same amount. In that case, it does. So I'm going to now put some uh, x coordinates, 1, 2, 3, making sure when you plot your graphs, these should be consistent across the x-axis, and then it needs to be consistent within the y-axis as well. Okay, now these don't have to be the same distance as the x values, but they have to be consistent along this particular axis. Okay, so I've got my numbers on there. I'm now going to plot the graph, uh, the, so the coordinates, negative 1, positive 1. Uh, I've got 0, positive 2. I've got 1, 3. And you can see that these are generally in a nice straight line. And then all you would do is get your ruler. And of course, mine's not straight. Yours should be, and it goes directly like this. Okay, imagine that was a nice straight line. Okay, so that's the first way of doing it. And that's probably the most common, as I mentioned. Um, the second next most common way would be by plotting the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Now, you might remember the y-intercept is simply that plus number at the end of it, which is nice and easy to do. So you could just put the plus 2 there. Okay, the, but the reason it is the 2 there is because we sub in x equals 0 into the equation. And then if we do that, Obviously, you get y equals 0 plus 2, y equals 2. But alternatively, if I want to find the x-intercepts, we sub in y equals 0, Okay, which means 0 equals x plus 2, therefore x equals negative 2. I'd go over to the graph, put my negative 2 there, and then I'd sketch my graph. Okay, pretty straightforward. They're probably the most two popular ways um, of doing it. What is the third way? Well, I certainly know uh, from my American friends um, that they often like using uh, the y-intercept and gradient form of doing this. So what they'll do, they'll look at it and go, okay, well the y-intercept is at uh, positive 2, so I put a positive 2 here, and the gradient is 1, or in other words, the gradient is 1 over 1, Okay, which means that we go Every time we go across one or up one, we go across one, up one, across one. We go down one, across negative one, down one, down one, and you can see we can create our coordinates that way as well. So there are three distinct sort of ways to do this. Uh, most people will use uh, the first method. I like the second method, actually. It's a quick way of finding your two x-intercepts, but I still probably use the first method quite a lot as well. Okay, so again, very quick introduction. Another idea too is to maybe use Desmos, okay, um, or something like that, or GeoGebra. All right, to double check your answers when you are sketching your graphs. But sometimes you might need to put more than one graph on, on the same axis. But please make sure that you extend your line all the way through. You make sure that you put your equation next to it. Um, and of course, making sure it's one nice straight line with a ruler because you get penalized for not doing that. Thanks very much, guys. As I said, very quick introduction to sketching a linear graph. Have an awesome day.